concentration or well, focus. Focus is nice. Okay. My focus, my concentration was caught into saying hello to a friend. That's completely crazy. Put your soul here and greet your friend. But don't try to do a perfectionist uh, task and then have your mind go. Or it's because I didn't do my homework. I didn't sharpen my soul the right way. Or it's because I was not listening to the song of the wood. As I was going down, there was a knot hidden in the wood and the music changed. And all, all that is... I have no excuse, you see. I mean, we are humans who are very good at making lists of excuses when, when we're making mistakes. But actually, um, that, that's what it is. When you make a mistake, it's gold because it teaches you more than anything on earth. I mean, okay, uh, let's talk about courage and, and its antidote fear. I am very scared of uh, animals with too many legs or no legs at all. So, it, it's a rentula. I mean, a tarantula, I, I, I am completely crazy. Um, but hold on, hold on. If I decide one day to get rid of my fear of tarantulas, well, I'm going to read books, I'm going to look at films, I'm going to meet people who are like wranglers or, you know, who, who actually have their mate and, 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 and eat. And, and I, will, I will, at some point, I will know so much this animal that I will fall in love with, with that tarantula. And then the next step to have the tarantula walk on my arm, nothing at all. So, in this stupid example of the tarantula, it's, um, it's your knowledge that is a solution to your fear. So we, I don't know, as, as a kid and even today, I am famished with knowledge. I want to learn everything I can. And I find out that whatever fear I have is, is uh, solved by, by learning. And, and okay, let, let's go maybe to, to the end. Let's go to the utmost. Let's go to what we all fear, uh, uh, death. But hold on, death is something very interesting. I mean, it's the population of the world is divided into people who think different way. Some people think it's an ending, it's black. Some people think it's the beginning of a new life. It depends on what you believe. It's like birth. It's something immense, something amazing, something that is part of life. So I would say about the tarantula, I'm scared to death about tarantula. You know, we, I use this word as an as a ultimate. You know, the word that I hate and rarely pronounce is the word impossible, right? But imagine, what, what is impossible? Well, again, it's, let, let's say I have, a, I have a, the great wall of China that I want to go through, right? And it's over there. And if I am here and I look at it, it's clearly impossible. So let's turn around and let's uh, uh, live a sheepish life. Or, since you cannot fight this monster, this giant, or at least not from far away looking, because you will see only the gigantism of the ogre, then I found out again, I have nothing to teach you, I, this is things that I live through and still today, I found out that the journey, the path, is actually what makes things possible. And look at that, if I am step by step, and Here's the wire walker talking, you know, one step at a time. But if I am approaching my goal, and if I enjoy, and if I am muttered by, by passion and intuition and faith, I will actually arrive to the base of the wall much easily and much earlier than I thought. And then now this wall, don't look at it like, oh, it's a wall, let's run back, and all this path that you have done was for nothing. No, get into the wall, get to know this wall. And like in every system, you'll see there is a little fissure. And then with your nails or with a, with a drill or with something, you can enlarge that fissure and you can, you can penetrate into, into, into this um, apparently impossible to go through world. And that's the story of my life. And, and I, I just want to end before we go in a Q&A, because now the, you know, you're going to have the, the opportunity to ask me a few questions. I want to say that this idea of impossible for me is like looking at the Great Pyramid. That's it. And we, miserable, miserable ants, little human beings, looking at the Great Pyramid, it's, it's impossible to build, it's impossible to move, it's a... Sure, sure. But approach. And look at the Great Pyramid, and when you approach, you would see that they are made of giant blocks of stones. Well, it's still impossible to move and impossible to, for an individual to do anything about a giant block of stone. But at least it's smaller. And if you approach the block of stone, you will see that actually it's made of, of rocks. It's made of amalgam of, of rocks. And, and if you had one of those rocks detached from the big block in your hand, it's a bit heavy, but it, it's something you can carry across. And, or with the hammer they gave you yesterday, it's something that you can smash into pieces. Well, let's smash that little rock. And what do we get? 
we get a grain of sand. Ah, well, that is something. A grain of sand is completely um, uh, overpowered by the human mind. I mean, I can blow it, you will not be able to catch it. Um, so anyway, a grain of sand is what creates um, a little stone. A little stone is what creates a block of stone. A block of stone is what creates those giant limestone blocks of the great pyramids, which actually were assembled by human beings. So my, uh, my lesson to me, and I hope it's contagious, um, is, is that uh, do not believe the impossible exists. And, and right now, I want to, to throw into, to dive into your question. So the most practical way is to go to the microphone and then ask your question, and you could even line up a little bit. We have very little time, but I would like this dialogue to end this evening. So anybody would ask the first question? You know, this takes courage to ask the first question. Um, oh, that's good, because I was going to, to throw something at the audience. I was in Switzerland not long ago, and nobody in Switzerland, they are very, I don't know what, but uh, they're neutral maybe, they are scared to death about life, so they were their hands on their lap a little bit, like some of you tonight, and they didn't dare to ask the first question. Okay, hold on, that's great, you saved my life. Um, so what I did is I tear a page out of my block, I made a little ball of it, and I threw it into the audience, and that's very funny, you don't think, you catch, it's a reflex, right? And I said very, as gracefully as I could. The person who caught the little ball of paper asked the first question. But I didn't have to do that because we have a courageous man here. So would you please uh, go to the mic? You raise your hand, right? But you beat him, you first. So please line up and do the same on the other side. We have two mic. Let's go very quickly, please. How are you? Um, I'm very good, how are you? I'm doing good. Uh, I was wondering what was your feeling after 9-11 and your towers disappeared? Yes. But no, because actually this feeling is very personal. I lost my towers, right? I saw them built up, grow up. I married them with a wire, and then they died in front of my eyes. But I, I have no right to say my towers. We have to say our towers. And also, I have no right to talk about my personal loss of two edifices when actually we lost so many human lives that day. But I'm sure you can imagine how I felt. Next question. Uh, Philippe, when you design a walk uh, physically, uh, for impossible reasons, sometimes some are more difficult than another, but do you also make your decision based on the epigrammatic power or image or metaphor that it presents to the world? I am not sure I understand your question. Can you <laughs> formulate it in a different way? Uh, yes. I'm, um, when you design, uh, when you decide between which two points you will place your rope, your wire. Do you also take into consideration um, what the import, the meaning to the general ah, public ha, ha, might ha. be? Yes, yes, no, no. You know what? This is an intuition. When I very often, and it's a great thing for an artist, I am invited to put my wire somewhere. Like a, the mayor of a city says, Philip, come and propose something. So I come, I study the city, and I get attracted by a site that is beautiful, or a site that needs a wire. Like the Twin Towers were separated forever, they needed a wire to unify them. So it's, it's a, par a dance of parameter between an artistic consideration, it has to be beautiful and interesting. I said no in my life to many Hawa walks. I could have become a rich man, but artistically I was not drawn to it. It has to be, of course, sound or engineering lay, but there are so many solutions in rigging. You can attach even to sand castle a cable if you, if you have the, the right, uh, you know, um, the, the money and the, and, and the visionary producers. But it is a dance of parameters. It's something that will inspire people. And at the same time, I am not actively working on that. It has to become natural. I have to feel, and I, I have to meet the people. If I go to the middle of Africa or Russia, I, I cannot impose a wire walk, open my luggage and say the wire is gonna be there. I have to eat your food and get drunk with you, and I have to, to learn who you are. And then I will see, ah, it would be fabulous for those people if I would create this walk that is so meaningful and beautiful for them. So that's a beautiful question, and I should write a book about it. Thank you. Yes. My question is. Yeah, we have the, the last uh, question, because we have to leave, right? Yes, okay, so that's the last question. Very I'll good. make it short and sweet. What yes. is your most proud moment? Pardon? Your, your most proud moment, your proudest moment of your career. What are your most... Well, my most proud moment is when I created nothing, is when I saw my little girl being born, you know, 
and she's no longer with me, but that was a very proud moment. Um, but as an artist, and I now uh, conclude, as an artist, um, I am rarely satisfied with my walk, but when I finish a walk and I turn around and I see how scary it was and I was not scared, and I refuse to call it courage, this is to me a pride, and when I inspire people doing that, like I hope tonight was the case, then of course it's a pride of an artist. So, see you very soon, thank you for coming, bye-bye. <laughs> Okay.